Hello, my name is Rich McHugh, and I manage the Digital Scholarship Commons in the library at the University of Victoria. Uh, this is one of my favorite workshops to teach, and I hope you're looking forward to a this fun and useful workshop. And to be clear, you don't need to be an artist to be an excellent sketch noter, as you'll be able to see through some of my drawings that I show in this presentation. If you can draw a stick figure, you'll do just fine today and as you sketch note into the future. So what we're going to cover over the next five or six minutes are what are sketch notes, why do we want a sketch note, what the basic sketch note process is, types of different types of sketch notes, we'll practice skills and techniques, and then you'll make your own sketch note. So what are sketch notes? They are ideas, not art. And as you can see on the sketch note on the screen there, uh, the only artwork really was arrows and bubbles around the text. I didn't even get a stick figure in. As you can see from this example from a UVic student from their Physics 190 class, uh, sketch notes are a mix of handwriting, drawings, shapes, and visual elements like arrows, boxes, and, and lines. In this case, the person used an iPad so that the circles and lines are quite uh, straight, uh, but this could have been done just as easily with pen and paper. Here are a few other examples of how sketch notes can be used outside of the classroom. For example, uh, taking meeting or presentation notes, idea mapping, uh, planning, like planning a trip, although the artwork on this is much better than I can do. Uh, documentation, and this is for uh, documenting how to do 3D printing, as well as travel experiences. So. Why sketchnote? Uh, in an academic setting, um, there's emergent research that indicates that summary note-taking combined with relevant drawings combined to be one of the most effective ways to remember new information and create links to other related concepts and ideas. Uh, researchers at the University of Waterloo conducted a series of tests on 24 undergraduate students and 24 adults over the age of 65 all of whom had normal co cognition, and the younger people remembered more words than the older people when writing them down, uh, which you can see on the graph here, which isn't surprising. Uh, younger people tend to have better memory. However, both groups improved when drawing pictures related to the words, but surprisingly to me anyways, the older group improved even more. Uh, so given my age, this is really encouraging. So just to summarize, the younger group remembered more by just writing out uh, uh, using text. Uh, both groups remembered more when they doodled, but the older group improved even more uh, to surpass the younger group. In a note-taking literature review from 2002, it was found that most effective notes highlight an overall frame for a lecture and embellish that framework with critical specifics. So they're really trying to find out what's most important and then summarizing that rather than doing transcription style notes. Cognitive load theory helps describe why sketch noting may work so well. Note that uh, working memory is finite. Uh, if you overload your working memory before there's time to encode and transfer it into long-term storage, into mental models, things will be forgotten. Uh, if you're asked to remember a series of numbers, uh, you can figure out how big uh, your short-term working memory is by how quickly the, uh, the first numbers drop off and you can't remember them. Sketch noting forces you identify what's important and elaborate key points with text and doodles. And this identifying what's important and elaborating with text and doodles uh, helps you encode key information from working memory into the mental models into your long-term memory. A hands-on example of the related dual coding theory is sketchnoting, where a listener engages both verbal and visual parts of the brain to summarize important information and concepts into meaningful diagrams and text. In theory, should help get things from working memory or short-term memory into long-term memory with the mental models you've uh, created or are creating. So to summarize, 
Sketchnoting engages your whole mind. Sketchnoting creates a visual map and connects with mental models you already have. Sketchnoting helps with your concentration, uh, especially if you're in a boring meeting or a boring lecture, doing some doodling can help keep you engaged rather than having your mind wander off. And sketchnoting taps into your visual language. Uh, if I'm sketchnoting a, a talk or a lecture, I'll get there a little bit earlier. I'll find out who the presenter is. So for example, Matthew Huckalack, I'll search for him. I'll find a picture of him. I'll draw the name of the talk as well as maybe a little doodle of, of, uh, of what they look like. Um, got some titles there to choose from. And then I will sketch note uh, what the talk is about uh, from start to finish. One thing, and especially initially when you start sketchnoting, if you're sketchnoting in, uh, on a new topic, you may not know what to draw as an image, which is perfectly fine. So what I typically do, and I still do this on a regular basis, I'll, I'll search, do a Google image search for uh, what I would like to draw. So for example, if I wanted to draw a laptop, um, I would do a Google image search for a laptop icon. And it's important to put the icon there because that'll give you a simple drawing. And as you can see on the right, I found a laptop that is similar that I would like to draw. And here's my drawing of the laptop. And you could use that for not just laptops, of course, but I could do a search for car icon or light bulb icon. So here's some different types of sketchnote layouts. One is linear, maybe with a couple of columns. Uh, another one that I use quite a bit is radial, so you've got the central theme or topic with little bubbles on the outside. Uh, another one that I use a lot is vertical. Path is another one I typically like. And you have modular, skyscraper, and popcorn. I typically use radial, vertical, and path, but that is just me. You can use whatever works best for you or what feels good. It's time to get hands-on now. Um, below this or in the, in the show notes, I'll have links to the hands-on exercises you can do. Um, enjoy, have some fun, and I'd love to see what you've been able to draw today.